Let's lift our hands to heaven one more time. Let's just give him glory. Let's thank him. Let's worship him. Bless his holy name. Father, we thank you for your, the greatness of your love towards us. Thank you for making us, calling us, preparing us, and allowing us to function as more than conquerors. Thank you for what you have accomplished for us on the cross. Thank you for everything that you have done. Thank you because no power of hell, no scheme of man can ever pluck us out of your hand. Thank you because what you have done is done. It cannot be undone. We bless your name, Jesus. We ask that, Lord, our minds will be elevated to be able to take delivery of all that you have done. Let this one week be an unforgettable week. Let families forever be blessed. Let businesses forever rise. Let the health of everybody forever be restored. Let life be granted to everyone here. Let nothing be missing, nothing be lost in our fold. Let this church experience exponential growth of all dimensions in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Let's give the Lord a big, big, big hand. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Come on, give the Lord a big, big hand. Glory to God. Amen. Um, God has been helping us. Amen. And I want to again appreciate um, our Father, Right Reverend Okoro. Thank you so very much for the opportunity we have to stand here and be a blessing. We truly, truly appreciate this. It's a great honor. Amen. The leadership of this church is awesome. Thank you so very much for all that you do for the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I want to welcome everyone that has come here tonight. Um, I believe that God has been helping us. And we have been progressing in light. By the grace of God, we will arrive um, at the fullness of what God wants to do in our lives. Praise the Lord. We, are, um, we have been studying more than conquerors. Amen. And we have established quite a bit of um, um, relationship with um, this theme from Sunday. And yesterday we saw that it is important that you don't just hear, um, you are able to receive and capture what God is doing. Otherwise, you will not be able to experience what God has done. If your mind doesn't see it, your hand cannot experience it. What you do not see is what you cannot have. You know, Abraham, God spoke to Abraham that he was going to have a child. But you see, that promise was taking so much time and it was being delayed. God didn't pray again. God didn't speak again. You know what God did? God saw that even his own word in Abraham's life was about to be aborted. was so delayed. So by something very critical. So God had to do something about it. What did he do? He came to Abraham and then uh, he called him out of his house and said to him, look up. And he looked up. It was in the night. And he said, count the stars. And as he began to count the stars, God now said, so shall thy seed be. Why did he do that? Because he needed Abraham not just to hear his word, he must be able to capture it in his mind. Why? Without your mind, Philemon verse 12, I can do nothing. There is very little God can do except your mind has embraced and your mind has received what God has spoken. It's one thing to hear. It's one thing to actually, you know, um, have it established in your mind. That's why if you are talking to somebody, you will be saying, at a point, you will be saying, I see, I see. Not I hear, I hear. You will be saying, I see, I see. Why? Because he has understood it. He has captured it. So he's seeing now, not hearing. I will stand upon my watch to see what he will say unto me. So when you are hearing from God, you don't hear alone. You must be able to also see. 
I will stand upon my watch. It should have been to hear what he will say. He said, no, to see what he will say. Why? God's word is to be seen, not just to be heard. And that's why last night we took time to establish that in the course of these meetings, God will help our minds to receive and actually retain. And the scripture told us that because they did not, even when they knew God, they did not retain God. So you can know God and not retain him in our minds. And that's very important. And tonight we will um, go a little bit further into why um, Paul kept talking about um, we are more than conquerors. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Um, yesterday, we saw that um, the the phrase more than conquerors was associated with him. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through him that loved us. Which means um, our capacity and um, functioning as more than conquerors is dependent on him and him alone. So tonight, we want to explore a little bit on how is it him? How, what in Christ sufficiently provides why we are more than conquerors? Okay, so um, the, the crucifixion of Jesus is the powerhouse of the believer. Listen very carefully. The crucifixion of Jesus is the powerhouse of the believer. You know, as far back as Psalm 22, David, thousands of years ago, prophesied about the crucifixion of Jesus. Many other prophets did. But in Psalm 22, we saw that Jesus, in prophecy, said, my soul is poured, my, my, I am poured out like water. All right? And I can tell all my bones and my hands and my feet have been pierced. David was speaking into the future. He was prophesying concerning the kind of death that Jesus was going to die. And it, it, it's so important that you understand the kind of death. He didn't just die. So he is called crucifixion, not death. Death of Jesus is different. The crucifixion of Jesus is different. So, Apostle Paul was speaking. He said, I, I was not sent to preach baptism. First Corinthians chapter 1, from verse 17. But I was sent to preach the gospel. And not just the gospel. Not with the wisdom of words. But Christ crucified. Christ crucified. There's something about Christ crucified. That's what he was told to preach. And somewhere else he was speaking. He said, when I came amongst you, I sought to know nothing else outside Christ crucified. So, the crucifixion itself is the power behind the workings of God for us. Not for him. It was something that God did meticulously. And it was so beautifully arranged that every step of that journey was pre-planned and was carefully, you know, um, um, manifested. Jesus himself knew and explained how he was going to die. In Matthew 6, 26, he was saying that the Son of Man will be betrayed in a few days from now. And then he will be crucified. All right, by evil men. So he knew how he was going to die. He wasn't shot. He wasn't poisoned. They didn't cut off his neck. Then he needed to be crucified. You know, that's so important because 
God has done something about the way Jesus died. You see, the way he died is the major source of our victory. The way he died. God did something with it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, he was speaking in John chapter 3 and verse 14. You know what Jesus said? He said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, John 3 and verse 14, so also will the son of man be lifted up. So, he was not shot on the ground. He was lifted up. So, that lifted up carries a meaning. In those days, it was the Roman government that crucifies its criminals. Jesus particularly came in the time of the Roman government. Because it was the Roman government that crucifies its people. And the scripture already says, this is the way he must die. He must be lifted up from the earth. So they searched through and discovered it was only Rome that does that. No other way. That's the way they killed their criminals. So he chose that. So he had to come at that time. You know, God has a lot of the things he does under control. Praise the Lord. Now, if you see in the book of Daniel, you will notice that Daniel had a vision where he saw four beasts. I don't have the time to go into that. Four beasts. And then each of these beasts represented kingdoms. All right? Now, the fourth beast represented the last, the fourth kingdom. And now, that kingdom is actually the Roman Empire. And the Bible says, Daniel prophesied and said, in the days of this king, Daniel 2 verse 39, God will set up a kingdom in the days of these kings that will never be destroyed. So you see, Jesus came preaching the kingdom at the time that kingdom took off. Which means, even the timing of Jesus coming connected with the Roman Empire. The word church that Jesus used in Matthew 16 and I will build my church. It was the Greek word adopted by the Roman government. They used church to describe the assembly, the ecclesia. They were the only ones that used that word. And that is exactly what the kingdom represents. And Jesus also chose that hour to also come. So you see, a lot went into the planning of what Jesus came to do. The kind of way it was planned suggests to you that it's something very critical. You see, we are, as a church, Christians are in a hurry. We, 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 we really don't understand things, you know, deeply. And that's because of the kind of, you know, um, culture and, you know, tradition and the way we, we received salvation very freely. So we don't really dig deep to understand how did this thing come. Even if we got something free, somebody paid for it. Because nothing is free under the heaven. If you got it free, it must have been paid for. And so the receiving of Jesus is so simple. That's why Paul said, let's not be, let's not be deceived by the simplicity that is in the gospel. You come out and you receive Christ and you go back home and then... That's the reason why a lot of us don't think something special is about salvation. Everything is special about salvation. Beginning from the resurrection, beginning from the crucifixion of Jesus. God will help us tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. There are seven things I want to quickly, because we don't have much time. I want to quickly help us to define. Please write them down. And I want you to please be very attentive. I will be very fast about them. And as I'm speaking them, God will help us to be able to receive them spiritually and apply it to our lives immediately as we are receiving them. 
all right as he was teaching the power of god was present to heal so as we are receiving these things i like your mind to wrap around it and i like your mind to envision it and quickly begin to apply it to anywhere you need to apply it the cross of jesus must be applied it is not a knowledge you receive it is a work that you apply so as you are hearing each of these points use your mind to begin to apply use your spirit to begin to pray within you apply it to your children apply it to your health apply it to your business apply it to your your spiritual life apply it as we are speaking because of time and I, and as that is going on deliverance and um, favor will be flowing in the mighty name of jesus shout hallelujah the first thing that we realize about the crucifixion of jesus is that jesus was sacrificed come on say sacrificed yes he was sacrificed now why will god sacrifice him the crucifixion represents a sacrificing god intentionally sacrificed his son second corinthians 5 and verse 7 the bible says christ our passover lamb was sacrificed for us so the first thing that immediately comes to your mind is that god offered the sacrifice already so if you see many of these our native people when they offer sacrifices god is the original sacrificer god is the number one giver of sacrifice because of what sacrifice means sacrifice means offering something to a deity so what god did was that he turned his son into a lamb and sacrificed him to himself for us the crucifixion of jesus was the sacrificing of jesus to god god sacrificed him to himself and us we are the beneficiaries of that sacrifice shout hallelujah shout hallelujah now when you when you hear sacrificing of jesus it wasn't an easy thing now in exodus 12 you will notice that the passover lamb that is a type of christ was meticulously described how to use the lamb in exodus 12 from verse 1 to 6 what they did was this listen carefully to show you how technical this thing is and why you must not take it for granted you know the bible says the head of the family in the jews in the in in israel every family will go to where they keep lambs and pick one all right they, they, there is a way they pick that one lamb the lamb must have been with them must be inside other lambs then they will pick one the one that has no blemish all right and that lamb must be one year old and the question will be why one year old i will tell you why it should be one year old that lamb will be one year old that's one number two after picking the lamb they will tie it somewhere in the house and watch that lamb for four days how many days for four days then at the end of the four days they will be examining this lamb for four days at the end of which they will now certify it pure enough to use as a passover lamb now when jesus came you will notice that there's something called the triumphal entry into jerusalem is that okay now it is four days it started from the triumphal entry to the day he died it's exactly four days all right now the the, the lamb is one year old why is it one year old a one year old lamb is a lamb at the prime of its life one year old lamb is the lamb at the prime of its life so jesus will be killed at the prime of his life so he died at 33. 
the four days they were examining the lamb was also the four days that they took jesus from one place to another facing panels he faced 12 panels it, that story is in luke 20 and luke 22 you will read it when you get home from 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 the council to council to pilate all of those four days they were cross-examining jesus corresponding to the way they were also examining the lamb the passover lamb and at the end of that cross-examination pilate in luke 23 now said i have examined this man you brought i find nothing wrong with him to deserve death that confession was what god wanted them to confess nothing wrong with him why to make him qualify to be used for sacrifice so those examining was to ensure that he was to be a perfect sacrifice you can imagine how much god paid attention to the details so jesus wasn't just sacrificed he had to qualify to be sacrificed now note that he was being sacrificed for us can you imagine taking those pains to qualify to be sacrificed for us and even we are not able to draw virtue from the fact and the truth that he was sacrificed in this way there is power in that ceremony in that in that act that for him to qualify he had to go through a series of things suggesting that crucifixion by sacrifice is critically important for us and i will show you a few verses that will make you know what god wanted to achieve with it you know when he took jesus through this process so that you will understand the enormity the greatness of your salvation you will be able to re receive with joy your salvation afresh so that you can appreciate it and you can you can you can receive it and apply it properly in every area of your life come on say i am saved say i am saved say it one more time praise the lord praise the lord it wasn't just sacrificed it was sacrificed at the gate at the gate means outside the city the way they actually sacrifice things physically at junctions outside no sacrifice is done inside the house it's done outside to show you that spirits we are involved and this is very important as we will soon see why god needed to take jesus the lamb through this process now one of the ten things is this let's look at the book of hebrew the book of um job chapter 33 you know um sacrifice also means ransom please write it down ransom it means ransom what you give out in exchange of something ransom sacrifice also represents ransom and so in some places in the bible they use the word ransom for sacrifice you know luke 10 verse 45 jesus christ did not come to be saved he came to offer himself as a ransom for many first timothy chapter 2 and in verse 6 the bible speaks about he offered himself as a ransom so the sacrificing of jesus was also was called ransom all right ransom giving out something to get something it is that thing that god wants you to get that he gave jesus his son for all right so he wanted you to get it and that's why at the end of this service today whatever jesus was giving out for you must receive it Look, your amen is not prophetic let your amen be prophetic so he gave it out now let, let's show let's hear um, job 33 are you there job 33 and um, from verse 19 let me read you something he said he's describing the story of somebody 
hear what he said he is chastened also with pain upon his bed and the multitude of his bones with strong pain this is describing the condition of some people going through affliction going through pain going through sickness see what he says here the next verse says so that his life abhorred bread he lost appetite and his soul dainty meat his flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen his bones could be seen sticking out verse 22 his soul draw it near to the grave he's describing the pathetic situation god was envisioning that at a point in time people will be going through this kind of health problem this kind of loss of life the envision did that there will be a time that some people will go through and they will be losing their lives and see what it says and um, the flesh is consumed away and it cannot be seen and his bones were not seen stick out he so draw it onto the grave and his life to the destroyer see verse 23 see the way out now what is the way out if there be a messenger with him an interpreter among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness then he will be gracious unto him and he will say deliver him from going down to the pit i have found a ransom i have found a ransom and the next verse says his flesh the effect of the ransom see what it is now his flesh shall be fresher than a child's own and he shall return to the days of his youth he shall pray unto god and he will be favorable unto him and he will shall see his face with joy for he will render unto man his righteousness you see this man was dying this man was losing his life and somebody said kai i wish this man will find somebody i wish this man will get a messenger i wish this person who is dying away now we look for a ransom he will not die he will not be consumed he will not be destroyed i wish he will find a ransom and somebody said i have found a ransom because you have found a ransom he said his flesh shall return and become like that of a child that means that health has been restored is that okay so when jesus was put on the cross as a ransom this is one of the effects that god wants to bring into your life that you will not go through this even if you do you can declare i have found a ransom is that okay so when the bible says that christ is our ransom this scripture is what he wants you to fulfill in your life nothing needs to deteriorate to that point anymore your health doesn't need to go that bad you can intervene you are a more than conqueror but your being more than a conqueror over your health is dependent on christ being your ransom somebody said christ my ransom over my body over my health over my destiny i acknowledge by the sacrifice of jesus christ has become my ransom please say it with all your faith in your heart say christ you are my ransom you are the sacrifice required to return and restore my health i will not deteriorate i will not go down i will not be consumed i will not be destroyed i will not be a victim because jesus is my ransom i have found a ransom my child will not be missing i have found a ransom my destiny shall not be lost i have found a ransom jesus you are my ransom this is the first thing that god meant to achieve by making jesus a sacrifice come on say i receive it come on say i receive it the sacrifice of jesus i receive it into my body 
it took my mind it took my family it took my education it took my finances the sacrifice of jesus i receive it i appropriate it i acknowledge it i retain it it begins to find effect hmm. hallelujah praise the lord hosea chapter chapter 13 verse 14 he said i will ransom them from the power of the grave you see the thing that god wants to prevent in your family this is what he's doing now i will ransom them from the power of the grave i will redeem them from death until all death i will be your plague all grave i will be your destruction the cross destroys the grave the cross destroys death I will ransom them from the grave. Lift your hand to heaven. Say, Jesus, you are my ransom. I have been ransomed from the grave. I have been redeemed from death. I receive Jesus as my ransom because of the sacrifice of Jesus. Amen. What a sacrifice. So the first thing that the cross represents is sacrifice. Please never forget. You know why I'm praying along with you? So that you can know how to use it to pray. This is the kind of prayer that is called New Testament prayer. Praying from the cross. Praying from Christ. You don't pray from your problem. No. You pray from Christ. That's where you are. That is where you live. That is where you move so you start praying from there so if you see your health in a way you don't like it doctors have told you some kind of things you don't like you don't panic they gave you a diagnosis you don't panic what do you do you just stand up and make these declarations is that true say jesus you are my ransom hallelujah in jeremiah 33 and in verse 12 the bible talks about he said i have ransomed him from them that were too powerful for them there are enemies maybe from your family maybe from around the place where you are walking something is just working against you you don't you are not you don't know something is just making things not work out you have it appeared the thing has overpowered you it appears that thing is just not making everybody has married you are not married you don't understand why jeremiah 33 and in verse 12 shows us and in verse 11 helps us to understand what god did about such a matter he said i have ransomed them from the enemy that was stronger than them is that okay and so what did he do he provided the ransom so tough issues going on in your life god wants you to execute the mystery of christ as your ransom it's a mystery the language is a mystery that word from your mouth is a mystery it makes god know that you know what god did when you use the language of ransom say i have been ransomed from this enemy this power that won't let my business flourish this power that won't let me advance this power that won't let me go into my place of inheritance this power i have been ransomed from your grip is that okay jesus being my ransom come and say i hear come and say i hear number two that the crucifixion represents is a very interesting one this is a very interesting one and uh, i'll be very quick about this in galatians 3 and verse 13 the bible says christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law from the curse of the law from the curse of the law now this is a whole seminar this curse <laughs> but let me just try and compartmentalize it a little bit when israel was ready to take to possess their land god told moses on their way to the land he said there are two mountains mountain gerizim and mountain ebal he told moses put the blessing 
Well, before then, he had told this is in chapter um, Deuteronomy chapter 11. All right, and he said, um, I put before you blessing and curse. Is that okay? Put the blessing on Mount Gerizim, put the curse on Mount Eba. So there were two mountains on the way to Canaan. Praise the Lord. Now, this is very interesting. And he now said, If you obey me, you will reap, reap the blessings on the Mount Gerizim. If you disobey me, you will take the courses that are on Mount Eba. There are two. Choose any one that you want. I want to obey Gerizim, blessings we follow. I want to disobey Eba, we follow. But you know, that's very critical. Now, in chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, from verse 15, you will notice the effect of the course. The course that was on Mount Ebal had effects, had manifestations. Chapter 28 of Deuteronomy, from verse 15, describes the effect of the course. They call it the course of the law. The course that comes from breaking the law. It was God's course, not Satan's course. It was God that put the curses there. It was God that put those effects of the curse there. And if you read that verse 15 to the end, you will notice that there is no sickness. There is no disease that is not inside those, those attributes of the curse of the law. Every kind of, even internal heat is there. Flesh being consumed is there death untimely death is there the heavens will be dried up like powder as po extreme poverty extreme lack is there all the things that people call causes today they are inside the cause of the law in other words there is no other cause that is not linked to the cause of the law the cause of the law is the foundation of every other cause that's why for a believer you don't break courses and i'll tell you why the cause of the law is the one that holds all the causes of life you can't just say i break the cause no the cause was not broken cannot be broken because it is connected to the cause of the law and the cause of the law is god's own imposed cause you can't break god's cause it was God that released that cause of the law. And it is that cause of the law that Satan uses to impose other causes. Ancestral cause, marital cause, financial cause, you know, you know, cause of affliction, disease that refuse to end. The, all those causes are linked to the cause of the law. So, and they don't exist alone. They draw strength from the cause of the law. And it was God that pronounced the cause of the law. Only God can remove the cause of the law. And when you remove the cause of the law, every other cause that was hanging on it will dissipate. So what the believer ought to do is to find that what God did with the cause of the law, not breaking individual causes, that are drawing strength from the major cause of the law. Are you feeling what I'm saying now? So, the Bible says in Galatians 3, verse 13, in the crucifixion of Jesus, God used it to score a second point. What is the point? The cause of the law was removed. So, Galatians 3, verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed us, not broke, because that cause was imposed by God. You can't break it. But you can be redeemed from it. So when Jesus hung on the cross, he, he, he redeemed us from the cause of the law. So that scripture reads, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law, being made a cause for us. Why? Cursed be he that was hung on the tree. So Jesus personally was hung on the tree and he knew that in being hung on the tree the cause of the law will be removed that's why he chose to die that way he knows the benefits of dying that way now christ has been sacrificed is that true which means technically speaking no cause is against you anymore 
Are you following what I'm saying now? Which means spiritually speaking, any other cause that was working against you has no root, has no foundation, because their foundation has been removed. So, as you receive the crucifixion of Jesus, picture in your mind, as Jesus was hung on the cross, it is your cause that he removed. Praise the Lord. So you cannot admit to anybody that you are under a curse. You cannot even make it a prayer point that somebody should break this curse over your life. It's an insult on the crucifixion. But a lot of people that don't understand this, they, they, they think that you can break a curse. No, for a believer, a cause, causeless, cannot stand. That's what it means. For the believer, the cause, T-A-U-S-E, for the causes, C-U-R-O-S-E, has been removed. The foundation, the reason, and the cause for crosses is no longer there. Why? Christ has been sacrificed. You cannot undo the sacrifices. You can't undo what Christ has done. Lift your right hand to heaven. Declare with me. Say tonight. I speak upon the altar of the crucifixion of Jesus. That no cause is at work against my life. No cause has power to work against my life. Every condition in my life, in my finances, in my health, in my destiny, in my children, that looks like a cross. Today, I stand upon the mountain of the crucifixion and I declare it is over, null and void. It cannot stand. It shall not stand. It has no cause. It has no foundation. I uproot it from today. Every cause, every manifestation of every cause working in my family, working around my life, maritally, financially, in my health, in my business, in my calling, in my ministry, I, David Abraham, I stand upon the foundation that is God Christ. I declare null and void, null and void, null and void. Every spirit that was associated with those conditions, go, go, go in the name of Jesus. Please get seated. Hallelujah. Number three. In Romans 6 and in verse 6, the Bible talks about when Christ, listen carefully, I like your mind to be involved in what I'm saying. Praise the Lord. The Bible says that when Christ was crucified, we were crucified with him. Is that true? Now, why? Why does God want us to be crucified with him? That verse 6 explains it. He said that the body of sin might be destroyed. Come as a body of sin. What is body of sin? The body that Adam spoiled with sin. The body that Adam destroyed. The body that carries Adamic recognition. The body that carried Adamic nature. So when Jesus was crucified, God says that you were crucified with him so that your body of sin will be destroyed. Let me tell you what that implies because if you don't understand that, you may not be able to draw virtue from it. You know, there are certain things that happen to people 
because they are natural because they are human beings is that true that is adamic natural disasters natural problems the law of wear and tear all the things that happen to humanity once you are human you cannot escape those things like getting old and dying some getting old become frail become blind arthritis will set in you can't walk again and people think it's normal it's part of humanity it is from the body of sin is that okay now you see from spiritual dark forces they can trace where you are praise the lord because they have a radar system where they can identify where anybody is so you can be in lagos but village people will know where you are because the body of sin contains trackers now my elder brother very quickly was um, when he was growing up i had this story from my mother my mother spiritual was a pastor but the family we come from was very not not so good amen they were not christians and then the my father's brother my uncle had you know, and the village people they were really tough so my brother was living and us were living in the city when my uncle comes to visit she will quickly you know what women do they will quickly hide my brother so that he won't see him so when my uncle comes he will ask of the boy where is he they say no he just went to school went to school went to school it's okay he, he will go back another time he will come back and say ah, where is he say no no he, he he just went out to buy something he kept doing that one day <laughs> when he came he said where is uh, mike he said he, he, he traveled he said kai stop this it's every day now when he told him he is not around he was all this while he was in india when he kept telling him he went to buy food he went to corner he went somewhere so the man now told him say look stop this nonsense every day we play with him in the night they go there pick him and play with him and, and return him and return him and he told my mother where he is in india i mean strange technology amen praise god and then i now understood what body of sin means there are trackers in your system there are things they plant in your body that causes sometimes disfavor there are damning situations situations that spoil your presence you appear in something the thing spoils you appear somewhere the thing dies when it's your turn for something it doesn't work again it is the body of sin that is responsible for those kind of situations you didn't know but god knows and god knew it will happen so what did god do to prevent it he took jesus and hung him on the cross why and took you to hang with him so that that body of sin that contains trackers will be destroyed so in case they are looking for you they will trace you and trace you and trace you and they will trace you to the cross because that was the last place that they saw you there you died and in the cross you met your death so should any witch be looking for you in lagos and you activate the cross they will look for you and look for you and track you to the cross and discover that you are no longer existing because this is a place of death why because you died with him on the cross that cross remains there as a memorial of where you died is that okay so the crucifixion also is a technology of god to confuse the devil and to end your tracking anything that was poison that was poison to your physical system that is responsible for why things are failing around you dies at the cross whatever they planted in your person that is ministering against you in your health in your finances in your establishment in the workings of your hands why do this spoil in my hand dies at the cross 
the body of sin was destroyed so when you see the cross that is where you died that is where you entered that is where your humanity entered behind the cross is a new you when jesus now rose your new you rose with him this your new you has no record in witchcraft covenant this your new you has no record anywhere else so if any man be in christ he's a new lift your right hand to heaven say with me say tonight as i stand upon the altar of the crucifixion of jesus i declare that body of sin that contained powers systems working against me working against the work of my hands on this altar i destroy them that body of death that body of sin died at the cross therefore this favor bad luck touch and die dies at the cross everything that was introduced into my body died at the cross every power monitoring me from any part ends at the cross every satanic track going on around my life by the cross of jesus i declare it terminated every power following me around for wickedness terminate at the cross in the name of jesus get seated we're in a hurry praise god i hope we can finish this one number four amen amen let's look at colossians chapter 2 and verse 14 colossians 2 verse 14 very quickly another thing that god wanted to achieve wants to achieve when he put christ on the cross Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 tells us um, are you there? Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Okay. It said blotting out the handwriting and the ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and he took it out of the way nailing it to what his cross his cross has come in again these are the things god achieved with the cross why they didn't cut off jesus head why they didn't shoot him his cross they used and god used that cross to achieve these different things which you must magnetize in your mind and keep remembering because therein lies your strength is that okay now see what he says he said he said um, the handwriting and the ordinances that was contrary he took it out of the way and nailed it to the cross what is the effect and having spoiled principalities and powers he made an a, an open show of them triumphing over them in it that it there means the cross he triumphed over principalities and powers in the cross is that okay principalities and powers are very dangerous entities they are not demons is that okay these are architects demon these are satanic architects that create technologies for satan in the lives of people in communities in cities it's a very long teaching on powers and principalities so god knew they would rise up so god created an antidote for them and the antidote is the cross so what did he do he said um, um 
blotting out the handwriting and the ordinances that were contrary to us what do you mean by ordinances and the handwriting you see what fights us is the law come say the law the law is what is fighting us and and uh, satan knows the law is what he's using satan has no access to us without the law satan uses our breaking of god's law to oppress us is that okay so he will tell god if you are a righteous man this man should not be alive because he has broken your law if you are a righteous man this man should this woman should be sick because see what he's doing against your own law so the law provides opportunity for satan to always strike so you know what jesus did this scripture says since the law is what satan is using at the level of powers and principalities against us and he cannot just rescue us that will make god unrighteous so what did he do he set up a system where there will be no more law that satan can use so he said blotting out the handwriting and the ordinances that were contrary to us and he did it on the cross the blood that was on the cross was used to blot out those handwriting so the next time satan comes to accuse you in the council against you he has no law to use so they said blotting out he did not destroy he blotted it out so satan stands to accuse you now because satan is called the accuser of the brethren his ministry thrives more in accusation now he needs to accuse with the law now the law is there but it's unreadable it's blotted is that okay so blotting out the handwriting and the ordinances that were contrary so when satan is making accusation he has no law to back up his accusation so the case will be struck out it lacks merit it is unfounded i can't find anything to accuse this person with so you will discover that you will be acquitted because the law has been removed is that okay now when christ was on the cross there were judgments that came on him because he died with our sin he was on the cross because of our sin and sin attracts what judgment from 6 p.m to 9 p.m there was judgment upon christ because of the sin our sin which he bore on his body of course that's why we saw that at that time jesus that used to call god father could not call god father that's when he said my god my god for the first time he was calling god god why because those three hours the sin of the world was laid on him and so god turned his back on him and jesus knew that the father had turned his back on him at that time was when judgment was released upon jesus all the judgments that could be on a sinner were released upon jesus body so the three hours he was on the cross he was absorbing causes he was absorbing death he was absorbing sickness he was absorbing failure he was absorbing evil he was absorbing every judgment that could have come on you the three hours he was on the cross he was receiving punishment he was receiving backwardness he was receiving untimely death he was receiving every kind of judgment that could ever be on you until all the judgments finished that was when jesus said it is finished what finished all the judgments all the judgments which means you are free from all judgments so the devil has no right he has no power to judge you on any matter even the earth received the judgment when christ was crucified there was earthquake is that true there were lightnings there were thunderings, and the centurion said kai this is not ordinary this must have been the son of god if i am lifted up 
I will draw all men not just men I will draw all judgment to myself hallelujah hallelujah so Satan has lost legal right over your life he has no law to use the constitution that he would have used against you is blotted is taken out of the way nailed to the cross he has nothing to use anymore I declare you free I declare you free your household is free your children are free your destiny is free your marriage is released your heart is released your money is released your peace is released your joy is released your glory is released your favor is released in the name of Jesus mm. thank you father glory to God 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 we'll just take one more so we can close and then uh, and we're going to pray praise the Lord you know something unique happened when Christ was crucified as soon as he was crucified the veil in the temple was rent from bottom to the top and in Hebrews 10 verse 20 describes what happened in Matthew 27 when the veil was rent and what did he say Paul said signifying that access to the father has been granted is that okay so now nothing is holding you from accessing God is that okay God has become your friend God has become your partner God has become your close confidant your relationship with God has become strong the cross of Jesus opened a door through his flesh for you to now access God and that's critical you know why because in Hebrews 4, the Bible says, come boldly, come fearlessly, come confidently to obtain grace and find help. Is that true? Is that true? Now, in the Amplified, it's beautified. It's, it's rendered beauty uh, um, 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 gloriously. He said, come and find help when help is needed at the time you need help that means god is saying by virtue of the cross of jesus you are not coming to me to ask you are coming to take obtain grace and find help timely help help when needed i have come to obtain I have not come to beg before it was begging but because of the cross of Jesus God has made a way through the flesh so there is a door that we can walk through into the holy of holies and obtain grace anything you want to become in life Paul said I am what I am by the grace of God the power to make men the power to become somebody the power to succeed is called grace come on say grace and when jesus died access was granted for you to come and obtain what grace so which means your prayer point has changed so what do you pray now you don't say lord give me grace what do you say i obtain grace for you to be a scholar i need grace for you to be a successful businessman, you need grace. For you to be a success in any area, you need grace. And by the grace of God, that grace is available. In the Holy of Holies, I have access to my Father. I have access to my God. I have access to grace. I come boldly. I come confidently. I come fearlessly to obtain grace and to find help at the time of need raise your hand to heaven tonight and say father i stand today 
on the altar of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and today I, I use the access that is granted through the door and I obtain grace for my life I obtain grace for my ministry I obtain grace to rise I obtain grace for academics I obtain grace for my marriage I obtain grace for success in every area of my life I obtain and I find help us help us favor in business favor in my place of work favor I access the place of help by the cross of Jesus I obtain and I find the help of God the help of man I will not be helpless I will not be stranded I will not be left alone I will not be abandoned I succeed in my business I succeed in my ministry I succeed in my marriage my home shall not break my family shall not go down there is grace there is help because of the cross of Jesus father thank you in the name of Jesus give the Lord a big 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 hand we will end there tonight rise on your feet tonight rise on your feet rise on your feet glory to God I want you to in in five minutes I want you to pray and I want you to pray normal prayer you must walk away from where you are standing you see the cross of Jesus is the engine house of the work of God is that okay you don't play you said how can you escape if you don't if you make light or you don't understand a salvation so great if you neglect a salvation so great imagine how God planned the cross elaborate plan is for something and that's something you must get it you must get it he said jesus you know you know you know paul said i don't preach anything else i preach christ crucified why so i don't make the cross of jesus of no effect so there's a way you over talk and you over pray and you over th do things that you don't involve the cross you make the cross of no effect so you are going to do some prayers tonight in five minutes and these prayers you are going to do let it come from your heart an understanding has come about what God did with the cross from what you have heard please apply it now to every area of your life what area needs intervention which department of your life requires divine intervention where do you need to be a more than conqueror is it childlessness is it finances is it business is it a job is it your health now you have a cross to look for to look towards he said they looked unto him and they were not ashamed he said looking unto jesus looking unto jesus the altar and finisher of our faith in numbers 21 snakes were biting the people and they were dying and moses cried out to god what shall we do what do we do god did not tell moses kill the snakes and that is very strange he did not tell them destroy all the snakes god did not send us to fight devils he did not send us to look for demons to start fighting that's why he did not tell moses kill the snakes he said moses he said sir he said look for the snake biting the people he said okay he said and then use brass to mold the serpent let it have the same color the same length of the one biting the people and then put it on a pole numbers 21 verse 8 and 9 and then lift the pole up and everybody beaten by the snake let him look up at the cross at the snake as many as look up they were healed a strange device a strange system but we have a generation that is demon chasing why are you chasing demons 
Why are you looking for demons? Look for the cross. And as they looked at the cross, the snake bite lost power. Is any family here that has been afflicted, that is going through any matter, there is cross to look up to. Is there anything going on in your life where you need to be a more than a conqueror? There is the cross to look for. Looking unto Jesus, you will walk out from where you are and apply the cross. I apply the cross in my finances. I apply the cross in my business. I apply the cross in my marital relationship. I am a more than conqueror. Over what? For all these things that God has done, I am more than a conqueror. On the basis of what Christ has done, I am a more than conqueror. That your prayer from your heart, from your spirit, use it to overtake and destroy everything challenging your joy in the name of jesus lift your hands to heaven and begin to pray begin to pray walk around walk around walk around walk around make declarations on the basis of what god has done on the cross i declare i am free from sickness on the basis of what christ has done on the cross i am free from childlessness on the basis of what christ has done open your mouth and declare declare your victory declare your conqueror declare your strength declare your capacity declare your freedom looking unto jesus looking unto jesus Every area of your life, Jesus, you are my ransom. My heart shall not fail. Jesus, you are my ransom. My family will not go down. Jesus, you are my ransom. I present you as my ransom over my children. I present you as my ransom over my husband. I present you as my ransom over my wife. That condition, that health that has been going down. Jesus, I present you as my ransom. Come on, keep on. Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe, I believe. I believe in you. Apply the cross. Apply the cross. Jesus, Jesus, the Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you.
as the Son of God. I believe in you. I believe in you. You are Jesus, the Son of God. Oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the cross of Jesus. Thank you for the cross of Jesus. I project the power of the cross into every family. I project the forces of the cross over every business. I project the power of the cross into every man, into every woman, into your health, into your finance, into your business, into your children. I release the freedom that comes by the cross. I release the liberty that comes by the cross. I release the blessing that comes by the cross. I release the deliverance that comes by the cross. Receive it now. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Give the Lord a big, 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 big.